You're smiling, which I hope is a good thing. Hello, Michael Winterbottom. How are you? Good to meet you. Amazing. Good to meet you too. Um, I feel like there's so much stuff I want to talk to you about, but the first thing I want to say is, as a director that's managed to have such an interesting and pretty successful um, career, and I would say independently, not kind of been within the system, um, how tough has it been? Because I interviewed the lovely Nick Broomfield recently. He said it's been very lonely. <laughs> Uh, well, I, it's not been that lonely. I, it's so lucky that I've been able to make uh, sort of work with a group of people. So usually, like when we make a film, like on, on this film, there's like a lot of people we're working with are people we've known for quite a long time, and we keep, you know, we shoot things very simply, and uh, we sort of work with quite a small crew. So it's like reasonably friendly atmosphere. It's not too lonely. It's like a, a really cool, different way of showing a band. Wolf Alice, I've interviewed them once, and I think it was a few years ago, as Brits Critic Choice nominees. Right. I hope I got that right. They are the type of band that tour so much that you very rarely get to know them. And even when they do interviews, they're almost a little bit of a mystery. And for me, what was really nice as a music band was throughout the film slash doc, as it develops, they actually start showing themselves a bit more. Yeah, the idea is like we see the tour from a point of view of, of, a, of a young woman who's just started work for the, with their management. So it's the first time she's been out on a tour. She's really doing sort of work experience. Yeah. So really, we're with her. That's we, we, she's like, she's like our point of view. And gradually, I think she got to know the band. So like we, the idea was hopefully that as she gets to know the band, we get to know them a little bit. As a director, please tell me you had to slum it too. Yeah, you we were, were <laughs> on the bus. I, I was on the bottom bunk. I, I foolishly set volunteers to have the bottom bunk. So I was like lying on the floor and the roof of my bunk was like three inches above my nose. It was a nightmare. We, nightmare. I used to always think tour buses are so cool and so rock and roll, but having been on any, they always smell really dodgy when it comes to showering and those normal things you're using the toilet like did you always wait till you got to the hotel like what was the deal there was no hotel we were, were you literally in the car park but yeah we wake up so what, what was that I, I i could sleep when the bus was moving but not when it stopped you know so usually wake up in a car park in a in a lovely city like manchester or belfast or whatever like in a car park at about four or five in the morning and you there's no shower on the bus so you have to wait for the venue to open so you then go into what is a back of a sort of gloomy old venue and trying to find the shower at night you think he was like an expecto it was just pretend and then there was somewhere you <laughs> lot were slipping into a posh hotel <laughs> and showering we did occasionally try and dive home as we weren't yeah. that far from home but generally speaking it was pretty authentic i think it was pretty ambitious as well when you think about doing something like this and you write it on a piece of paper you're like uh are they all going to play along because me if i was in a band i'd be like oh they're actors but somehow everyone forgot their there's actors, there's actually a real band, and it felt like it just became almost real. Yeah, I mean, the idea of the actors is that is that we you know that we can be with them in moments which are private, you know, when yeah. they're by themselves, when they're becoming friends, when they're making love, whatever. And so we, that we have like our intimate moments with them, but then we then use them to go out and be with the band so that we didn't have to get too, like, we were trying to avoid getting too annoying for the band and being too much in their face. So we were always with Estelle or with Joe, or whatever, when we were with the band and the crew. And yeah, I think, I mean, with, even with the actors, we, we told them basically they had to like work as though they were you know, part of the crew. So they, they had the whole tour, which was like three and a half weeks. They were having to really just be members of the crew and get on with it. And then we filmed them as well. And I know it was a lot of, um, I think a lot of stuff was spontaneous too, and there was no like, really thick sort of structure but you did have a few different things was there anything that went completely nuts and you were like we can't leave that in guys <laughs> No, I mean obviously you sh we shot, shot a lot. So we shot like 16, uh, you know, gigs, and and so we obviously have you have a load of material you don't use. But I mean the the thing that was kind of most random was that that by bad luck for Theo, Theo the bass player, when he got back okay. to London, like the the real Wolf Eyes real London band, they got back to London, and then suddenly his yeah. arm had some like some some big swelling, had some sort of weird viral infection I think on his, his elbow. So then it, suddenly there was like a whole change of bass player for the for the for the concert. Part of me felt really sorry for him because there was a bit when he gets in the car right yeah. side he didn't even get an Addison Lee like he was like somebody mom, picked his, his mum okay his mum picks him up there's crowd there and no one's really identified it's him and he's getting in I'm like guys it's him from the band why are none of you cheering and he just sort of drives off I know it's very sad moment. you know how how much how difficult was it to edit because I'm assuming it was such a long process being on tour for that long and then having to cherry pick it it did it was a long watch which I didn't mind but I did feel in my mind I bet this was really difficult to edit I mean, the thing is that, that you know, when we started, started the idea, we'd met with man ages ago, it'd be telling us about their life, and they were always on tour. Yeah. You know, there's what, one strand seemed to be very romantic and exciting. You, 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 you're a young band, you've you know, wanted this all your life, you've got thousands of fans, really, you love you everywhere you go. Yeah. 
So part of that was like I said, but also you know, part of it seemed like it'd be really hard work. And then doing the filming the tour as well, you're incredibly aware that it is incredibly hard work. And we were from the point of view of the, the crew. So like they're having to get up kind of early in the morning, get all the gear in, they've got to do all the sound check, they've got the, the concert itself, then they've got to clear it out, and then they travel. So that and I wanted to capture something of that. And for me, like part of the thing which is most like absent in the film away, but we tried to kind of refer to it is that is it that whether you like living in this bubble of the boss or not, yeah. you're away from your home, you're away from your family, you're away from your friends. I wanted to have that sense of, you know, that that is tricky. So it felt like it, you had to have a certain amount of repetition to get that sense of this is, you know, actually, you know, this is their life. You know, we, for, for us, three weeks was like, okay, we've got to get off this bus yeah. and go. It's, the crew was like going off on the next door, the next door, the next door. That was, that's their world forever. It feels like it's really relevant right now. I don't know if you saw Katy Perry when she was re uh, releasing her album recently. She did this whole kind of sit down talk with a psychiatrist, which was quite deep. But they were talking about the fact that um, how every day you're this, you're doing the same thing. And even if you love it, when I watched it, a part of me did feel a bit sorry for the band. I couldn't, not in a, I know they love their jobs and stuff, but every day you're performing the same set. Yeah, it's a different crowd. The same set, going and showering, going in the bars, da 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 da. And there's a level of like, everyone always says they're so lucky, but you forget that it's still quite mundane. Did you ever feel like that when you were going through the journey with them seeing that it's like a fixed routine almost? No, it's very hard. And I imagined as well, naively, that, that they have one advantage of the bosses that they would live their life on the bus. They'd be there home from home. But actually what they tend to do is like, as soon as they wake up, they go into the dressing room. So actually they're, they're living their life in an kind of anonymous room like this, at the back of a kind of smelly old sort of hall. You know, that's not a kind of glamorous -like place to be. But obviously they have, the band have, that one hour. You know, I think Joel the drummer says that they live for that one hour. That's it, and all the, the other 23 hours are all focused for that moment of excitement. And of course, if you've you know, been playing music together for a few years, then suddenly you have thousands of fans who sort of like worship you. It must be, that, that bit must be exciting. I mean, we all dream about being rock stars. You got to go and tour with rock stars. Um, was it everything you expected it to be? Uh, I know you had a camera too. But. Yeah, well, there was, a, there was a, uh, it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Does that mean no more life on the road for you? <laughs> yeah, definitely never again. When I, when I got off that bus, it was like, okay, thank God. Did you imagine doing... I, weird, like, I felt like I was still travelling even when I got really? off the bus. Um, and did you do you feel like it was because you spent so much time together, was there a sense of community? Did you all feel attached to each other? And when you've seen each other since, I wondered how the band would feel watching back the footage because the sex scenes... I was like, they didn't see all this going on, obviously. Yeah. So when they watched it back and you all had a screening, what was everyone's reactions to all the scenes <coughs> that they perhaps weren't a part? I think I, we, we showed it at the film festival, London Film Festival last year, and so the band were there and their friends and that, so I think they liked it. Yeah, look, look, I mean, I, I hope they like it because I think they're a great band and I think the film shows that, you know, as a live band, they're a really great band and I'm sure, I hope, like, in 20 years' time, they'll look back on that and be really glad there is that record of them because, you know, I think we were looking for a band that's, like, like you know, a reasonably young and we just started out, they just had one album, so there's still that kind of sense that it's exciting. And what's great, I think, for a band like Wolf Alice is they have these thousands of fans, but at the same time, they have, no, they, they're like, when they're on the ferry, they're just, like, sleeping being rough on the ferry or when they you know they go out to the pub they're not like they're not insulated from their fans in the way that if you become hugely successful your kind of world becomes separate they're still like in a way they you know they're very you know the gap between them and their fans is tiny you know, and uh, so that is I think that's probably the most exciting moment for about the most enjoyable moment. The other thing I wanted to ask you um, to end with is um, you kind of do a lot of different things and normally like a lot of people seem to sit in the boxes that they're given or they start off with. Um, where does that come from? How come you're so brave and so fearless when it comes to doing what the hell you want to do? I, know, I just try and make films that I'm interested in. So if you've done a film, you know, like for instance, if you've done a film with a band, touring around a band, you don't want to do the next film like that. You want to do something different. So for me, you know, we, I'm lucky I've been, had to, you know, I had the chance to make quite a lot of films. And it's like, if you know, we're doing something serious on one film, then it's, you know, it's usually quite attractive to try and do something which is you know, more fun than the next one. And any advice for up-and-coming directors? I met a whole load at Sundance London and I had no idea they were still trying to get distribution for their films at that point. Um, and their stories were really, like, they really touched me. Some had been doing them for six years, seven years, and doing proper jobs on the side, like advertising campaigns and all sorts. Um, a lot of people want to do this. I know it's a lot of hard work. Um, any advice you would give to budding up-and-coming directors? Um, I mean, I think I think filmmaking is becoming more like music in a way. You know, it used to be that with film you had to go and get like your, you know, even even for your first film you had to go and get a million quid or whatever. So you had to go to financiers and get money before you could start the idea. I think now obviously it's much more possible with kind of modern technology that you can go off and have a go. So it's a bit like with bands where you're gonna have to kind of make loads of films. Like bands, you know, work for like ten years or whatever before they become they get their break breakout kind of moment. I think it's gonna be the same with filmmakers. So all you can do is like if you have something you want to, I think the thing is like make sure you're telling a story you want to tell or, or you know, make a film that you want to make 
and then go out and have a go and do it. Amazing, lovely to meet you. Congratulations with the film. I am. I would love you to do it with someone like Mariah Carey because I feel like it'd really challenge you. <laughs> Could you I consider think, it? I think, I, think, I think at one point our bus was parked in the car park next to Adele's bus. It was like, okay, maybe we should have been on that bus. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome as well. Um, but no, lovely to meet you and congratulations with the movie. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you. you.